Hello my friends and welcome to the channel today, your channel for fun and adventure in the out of doors. Okay, new project on the go. Um, awesome. Uh, this will be my very first gear review. Um, and yeah, I'm going to do my gear review a lot different than everybody else is doing the gear reviews. For one simple fact, when I take a look at the gear reviews that are on YouTube, um, I don't know, they make me cringe, they make me cry, they make me laugh. Uh, the reason being is that half of these people that are doing gear reviews, man, and no offense to any of the fellow uh, content creators out there, but if you haven't even used the gear yet, how in the world are you giving us a gear review? Um, it doesn't make any sense to me, man. Um, or some of the gear reviews are, well, here's my tent, we pull it out of the box, they go through all the specs, the same specs that you can just go on the website and look at. Oh, this is the this is the thickness of the di uh, this is the 30D ripstop. Uh, they set it up and they've never even used the thing before. Um, that is not a gear review. A gear review is after you've used it and then you can give honest feedback. And that's what I'm going to bring to you guys today. So, what piece of kit am I doing a gear review on today? Hiking boots. And I'm going to tell you what, proper footwear to get you to where you want to go to set up your shelter, to carry the weight of your backpack. You need proper footwear for whatever type of train that you want to travel on. I'm going to show you my type of train that I travel on. It's going to be different from the people way down in the south, Georgia and all that kind of stuff. I mean, um, so it's important to see what kind of train you're using the, the, the kits on or for, um, what you're carrying, what like... So I'm going to bring you a gear review on the Solomon uh, 4D2 GTX. Uh, I bought these boots uh, March the 17th of 2017. So it's almost four years I've been wearing these boots. Um, and yeah, let's get into taking a look at, I mean, you need something that's going to support you. You're going to need something that's comfortable. You're going to want something that's light. You're going to want, like, hiking boots to me are extremely important piece of kit when it comes to backpacking in the backcountry. Um, you know, uh, I've used these boots uh, as dress shoes. When <laughs> I haven't done the video yet, but I've worn these boots as dress shoes when I went in to film the uh, Human Rights Museum here in Winnipeg, Manitoba. Um, I've used them uh, as the uh, Twisted Bike Packer. Um, I've used them on my very first bike packing trip, um, but mostly, guys, what I want to do is I want to show you how I have absolutely kicked the snot out of these things and how well they performed for me, and then I'll give you my final thoughts at the end. All right, let's, let's, enough of this, and let's get into it. I mean, slow, just, I gotta slide it down, I gotta slide it down. At least I'm not coming down here. At least I'm not coming. <laughs> One of the toughest things that you can do uh, to a pair of hiking boots is with a heavy pack on, is beat feet down the road. That asphalt, not only does it just, you just, it's just jarring, um, but it's also extremely, that asphalt surface is extremely, especially when it's hot, extremely hard on the, on the uh, soles of the shoe, the grip, uh, the lugs, you know what I mean? Um, let's take a look at some of that. Can you not like that?
walking down the number one highway through the city for 18 kilometers. I got another five to go. So now that we've uh, absolutely kicked the snot out of on the asphalt, uh, it's trail time. So what are the conditions that I expect my boots to go through um, and how well do they perform in those on, on that different terrain, uh, whether it be, well, let's have a look. Well, that might not be it for the water crossings, but we are climbing an elevation now and yeah. I had told myself with that last water cross and I was just going to keep hiking in my uh, shoes. I had done them up super tight, double knotted the knot, and uh, just to keep going with them. But they're certainly much lighter than these Solomons and socks and gaiters. So, and if we're climbing, I want protection. But looks like we got ourselves a beach walk. So, let's take a walk. Well, this sure is a lot softer on the feet than uh, before it got ground down to smithereens, but same walking is tiring too. So we're hoping that we don't have too much of this, to be honest with you. Oh, 
sand, just like asphalt, is equally abrasive. But the difference is, is that sand gets everywhere. Sand gets inside the boots, it gets underneath, there's a tongue, uh, it goes underneath for your foot box. Um, sand is extremely abrasive. Another killer on boots is when they're continuously wet, dry, wet, dry, wet, dry. Well, Mom always said the Lord hates a coward. Let's go. Yep, yeah, that did it. Here we go. Oh, we're jumping that deep. I guess that's what this is over here. But then you can't see what you're walking on. Tune in when uh, things are getting packed up. I got all my clothes here, they're all soaking wet. I had to actually get into a river yesterday, uh, late, um, for assisting a young lady, and uh, I hope that she's doing fine. But we'll, uh, I'll, I'll touch on that a little bit later when I can have some private time somewhere on the trail to talk. So. A uh, point of interest there is that it doesn't take a boulder field or a rock garden to uh, be an ankle breaker. Uh, so let's get right into the dirty part of this video right now. <laughs> and uh, you'll see, we're, I mean, support in a boot is king. Man, I was tromping through a whole bunch of wetness to see that mud. But who cares? That's what the boots are meant for, that's what the gators are meant for. good support, your ankle support, uh, in that kind of situation. So let's see, what have we done now? We've taken a look at uh, the abuse of the road height, the road walking, uh, wet boots, sand, uh, mud. Um, what else do we got? We got lots. How about we take a look at an area where you just want awesome grip, where you want those boots to stick for you. Let's take a look at some of that now.
on that one, baby. So, almost a couple bad times there, uh, but not quite. So before we do get to my highs and my lows uh, with these boots, uh, let's take a look at just some absolutely demanding situations, trails.
just being swarmed by mosquitoes and black flies and deer flies. Anyways, I climbed up this lid. I climbed up this cliff. See, you can see that water just just a little bit of it trickling, a little drip in there. Well, I finally found a little rock here, a little a little pool that I could put my MSR hyperflow in. Uh, then the pump hooks to the bottle, and that's how I'm getting my water is uh, from this running down off this rock here. And then it's the top of the mountain up there. So, a little precarious situation right now. Gonna put the camera away, but I wanted to show. Uh, All right, guys. Well, as we just seen, uh, some darn right tough, challenging, if not extreme, hiking in situations uh, that those boots helped me get into, as well as get out of. Now, uh, just before we put a wrap on this, I'll show you a couple of the lows, and I'll show you a couple of my highest moments, th uh, thankful, uh, and only because of the boots. So, all right. I accidentally knocked some snow off my shelter trying to get out. Ooh, these boots suck this morning, they're just soaking wet. Alright, I just left Manterio Lake after having a, a, a lunch break. And that swamp, man, it got me. I was in there for almost five minutes, man, trying to pull myself out. Like, look at this. Right up to there, all the way down, man. Gators are coming off now. Whew, that was a challenge. I tell you what, I was almost getting ready just to wait until somebody else came by. They could throw me a rope and drag me out. But we got her done. She's gonna be a soggy wet for the rest of the day now. I've been crashing through this. Look at this. Rope finding. Well, I'm going to tell you what, man. That didn't look like too much. Look at this. Up over my knees, right almost, almost to my crotch, man. Today, today is like almost kicking my butt, man. Holy smokes, man. That just sucks. You know, get in the light here and show you a little better. Look at this. Good Lord. All right. <laughs> Welcome to the backcountry. Oh, man. I tell you. Well, there's no such thing as dry feet today. Not even close. All right, we got to get through the rest of this. Here we go.
All right, my friends, well, that is a great representation of those boots taken a snot kicking. Um, and it's not because it was done on purpose, it's because that's the type of train that I'm going to use them on. Those are the conditions that I'm going to be faced with um, for my hiking. That's the, 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 every, all these little shots that you've seen, that's exactly the conditions and the terrain that I love to, to backpack in. Um, I love that ruggedness. But I need something that's going to be light on my feet. I need something that's going to give me support. And I need something that's going to be able to withstand what, it, what I need it to withstand. Um, so without further ado, um, let's take a look at the boots themselves. Or maybe what I should say is what's left of the boots themselves. I'll adjust the camera angle and we'll have a look at them. Yeah, so... I'm going to get up here in a little bit. I should check my new pillows bugs. Get them guys on here in a minute. They say good morning as well. These are the Solomon Quest 4D2 GTX hiking boots. Um, I purchased these once again, like I said, in uh, March 17th of 2017. Um, and the price tag on them at the time from Mountain Equipment Co-op is where I got these, uh, was $269 before the old tax man got his nose stuck in there. So, uh, yeah. They put a lot of, a lot of miles on them. Um, so straight out of the box, um, they're super lightweight. These are not much more than a hiking boot, a hiking shoe would be, um, yet it's considered a boot. Now these are, uh, you know, they have some leather on them, uh, like in here. This is all leather here. Um, but I like more of a synthetic boot because um, just for the amount of times that you've seen these boots get wet and dry, um, leather tends to shrink a lot more. Um, so, yeah, so I didn't want to go with them. These are Gore-Tex, um, and I don't mind Gore-Tex because here in Canada, um, we get more cooler hiking weather than we get extreme hot summer weather. Um, so I like the fact that I can splash through a puddle here and there and my feet stay dry. Um, and it also helps add with some warmth uh, in, the, in the boot itself. Um, so that's always a nice thing. Um, as you can see, these things have, have taken a kick in. Um, we're, they're coming apart here at the side. As you can see that there. Um, and they're coming apart at this side. If you can notice that in there, I'm not sure. Um, there's nothing left of the soles. There's like no grip on them. If you can see that. The heels are coming apart. And that's on both of them. Um, both of them uh, are suffering the same, same destruction in the same areas, um, same soul as, and I'll tell you what, when you're beating feet down highways all the time, that's where this, that's where this damage occurs for the most part. Um, this isn't mostly trail damage, this is hitchhike uh, damage, um, but for four years of doing what I do, um, look at how well these things have stood up. I mean, even this way, um, like you're... I mean, they still have a ton of support in them, um, and I guess that's where they get the 4D, uh, whatever. They got the, the contra grips, uh, sole on them. Uh, just absolutely awesome. Um, nice and lightweight, but they give you that nice, that good protection around the ankles. One thing I really appreciate about these boots is that they have lace locks here. So um, if you can see this guy here. Um, that's a lace lock there, so when you're, when you're doing up your lace, I, it would be the other one, so we'll just bring it across. When you're doing up your lace, you, uh, see it's easier when it's on your foot, I guess. You can get it in there, um, and you can lock that, see, now that's locked right in there. So if you want your foot a little bit looser and the top part a little bit tighter, or vice versa, normally I like my foot really tight all the time. Um, 
And that's what's great about these boots too, is that they really snug around your foot in, uh, like, so that uh, what I love about them the most is going downhill. Um, my feet never slide, I never lose any toenails. As a matter of fact, I've only had, in the four years, I've only had two blisters uh, with these guys. Um, so anyways, but when I got my gaiters on, I like to have the top a little bit looser, just to allow any, any uh, moistures, you know, some humidity out of the boot, um, into, the, into the gaiter sort of thing. Um, without gaiters, I like, it, I like the whole thing just snugged right up. Awesome, so yeah, so these are the Quest, uh, no, what did I just call them? 4D, 4D2 GTX, uh, Solomon hiking boots. Um, so, and I challenge anybody that uh, has a boot out there that it can stand up even remotely as close. Like, I don't see there's another boot out there comparable for. Um, just one comfort straight out of the box. Lightness, durability, um, I mean these things have had it man, I mean like these things have got me, uh, yeah. I'll show you one more clip uh, that I've never put on any other video before um, and that will explain these boots just perfectly I think. Alright, we'll do that now. Oh, and uh, if anybody, I'm not, this by the way, I'm not sponsored uh, by Solomon. Um, I freaking should be. Uh, <laughs> um, oh, here's another little area that's starting to, you know, I think tragically, tragically hit sung at best. Boots are hard, so when they start, they really fall apart. <laughs> it's just, they're done, man. And until I can replace them, so is my hiking. Uh, if anybody happens to know anybody in Solomon uh, that uh, wants to sponsor me and bring new pair of size nines, um, that's what kind of take. Any other companies want me to kick the snot out of their hiking gear? Um, yeah, sure. Send me off a, a free pair of your boots. I don't want shoes, and I don't want leather. I want a boot just like this in size nine. That's what I'm looking for. Um, and I gotta hurry up and try to find a way because uh, we're coming into March and that means that hiking season is about to start sometime, you know, within the next couple months. But, um, yeah, with, like, these are done. So until I can get my hands on a new set of boots, uh, yeah, content's gonna be a little slow, guys. So, anyways, let's take a look at that clip. And uh, I just wanna all thank you very kindly for uh, uh, sticking in with my first gear review. Um, and I hope that, uh, yeah, at least I was able to show this boot in action. Now you can actually make up your mind what you guys think this boot uh, maybe is right for you or, you know, maybe, uh, uh, you know, it's where you have two different hiking styles or, or terrains or whatever. But at least now I've given you enough information that you can make a decided decision about the Solomon boot. So, all right. Thanks so kindly for your time. And remember, guys, get out and stay out.
What a push to get here. Let's go get camp set up, man. And then if I get over there, and there's nobody else. What a special place this is, man. I will never forget today. I'll never forget any one person that helped me get here. What a push. How's the reward to effort? This is way more of a reward than I deserve for the amount of effort. But I'm taking it. Let's go get camp set up. <laughs>